County Democratic Party's 2014 caucus training. Our caucuses will be held throughout the county on March 4, 2014, beginning at 7 p.m. People should plan to arrive around 6.30 p.m. to facilitate signing in. The purpose of caucus is to organize the Democratic Party for the upcoming 2014 elections and into 2015 by strengthening ties between neighborhood Democrats, by electing precinct committee persons to work on grassroots organizing, and electing delegates to go from the precinct caucuses to the county assembly on March 22nd, where they will then designate candidates for office for election in November of 2014. This is a flow chart that indicates how the process goes from uh, the night of the precinct caucuses down to the state assembly and the process of nominating candidates. On the left, you see we elect two PCPs, precinct committee persons, on caucus night. And then we also elect delegates that go to the Arapahoe County Party Assembly. At the county assembly, we then designate candidates for the state house of representatives, county commissioners, countywide offices, and then we elect delegates who will then represent Arapahoe County at both the state assembly and the congressional district assemblies. So we'll cover those uh, later. But to be clear, the only things that happen on the night of caucus are these two things, electing the, the precinct committee people and electing the delegates to the county assembly. There are some other uh, sundry business, but these are the two most important things that are done uh, on caucus night. So you are going to caucus, and you'd like to know why should you be a delegate from the precinct caucuses to the county assembly and beyond. It's a pathway to being a delegate to the state assembly or to the congressional district assembly. Uh, it's an opportunity to shape the party platform. Uh, resolutions are introduced at the precinct caucuses. They're voted on at the precinct caucus level and then submitted to the county platform committee where they will be incorporated into the county party platform and voted on at the county assembly by the delegates. And then the platform is submitted to the state party where uh, they will incorporate the various county platforms into a statewide party platform. And then in the words of Indiana Jones, it's your opportunity for fortune and glory. Who could participate in the caucus? You must be a registered Democrat for at least two months prior to the March 4th caucus night. You must be a resident of the precinct for 30 days before caucus. You must be registered to vote in that precinct for 29 days before caucus. If you turned 18 or become a naturalized citizen within the two months prior to caucus, you may still participate. If you don't meet these criteria, if you've moved within in these deadlines, you should probably attend caucus at your former precinct location. Getting started, when you arrive at the caucus location, and there are 11 caucus locations throughout Arapahoe County, uh, you should find your precinct table. There will be a blue folder on the table and a tent card indicating your precinct number. Um, you should sign in on the pre-printed uh, sign-in forms inside the caucus packet. If you are not on the list, you should contact the site coordinator at each caucus location, and they will attempt to determine why you are not on the list. If your ability to participate cannot be verified, but you're certain you are at the right location, then there's a mechanism for you still to participate, and that is to fill out an affidavit of eligibility uh, that the site coordinator will provide to you, and then you could participate as if you were uh, on the rolls to begin with. Uh, no proxies are allowed to be carried to caucus, so if you uh, have a neighbor that cannot attend caucus, uh, you cannot carry their, their proxy votes to the caucus, um, and there are no provisions made for late arrivals or early departures. You can only participate while you are present at caucus. So if you arrive at 720 and most of the business of the caucus has already been done, they're not going to start over for you. Or, or if you are happen to be 
running your particular precinct caucus, you should not start over for a late arrival. The caucus uh, should be called to order at 7 p.m. This is often done by an existing precinct committee person, but can be done by anyone present after 7 p.m. Uh, the rules will be read aloud probably by the site coordinator for each location. Each precinct will then elect a chair and a secretary for the caucus. And don't worry, you're not signing on to a long-term commitment. Your duties are only for the evening of caucus. Um, the chair will just be the presiding officer for that precinct, and the secretary will make sure that the paperwork is completed. The meeting is then conducted. All the forms are filled out legibly and returned to the site coordinator at the end of the evening. Please make sure you actually do that. In 2008, I actually had to chase somebody down who had left the location with their caucus paperwork, and we uh, were desperate to get that paperwork completed that night. The, uh, one of the first things you're going to do is elect two precinct committee people. And you may ask, what is the uh, precinct committee person? They are, in short, the heart and soul of the Democratic Party, both at the, uh, the local level and at the state level. And historically, we have uh, looked at data and seen that PC, uh, precincts with strong PCPs perform 3% better. Uh, meaning that they have uh, contacts with Democratic voters in their precinct. They have developed some relationships with their neighbors if they didn't already exist. And they are ensuring that no Democratic voter uh, leaves the ballot on their kitchen table or fails to go to the polls on Election Day. And we have to make sure that every Democratic voter votes in order to, uh, to win the elections that we're uh, looking at in November of 2014. The duties of a precinct committee person um, first are to attend uh, central committee meetings of the Democratic Party. There are usually only one of those every year, and there's plenty of notice. Uh, they usually happen in the winter, usually around February. Um, on a rare occasion, we may have need for a second one. Um, they are to recruit and supervise party workers within the precinct. Um, that's not mandatory. A, a PCP can uh, take on all of the duties within their own precinct, but it helps if you've got um, your neighborhood divided up into blocks and can delegate some work. Um, the PCPs, along with their block captains, will distribute um, Democratic Party and Democratic candidate literature to the, the voters within their precinct, um, support uh, neighborhood canvases, registration drives, and hopefully fund drives uh, where possible. And then obviously they are um, hopefully going to support the party's nominees for various offices. And financial support is obviously not required, but obviously it's also you know, generously um, accepted and thankfully accepted. Uh, next we elect uh, delegates to attend the county assembly. And the number of delegates for, the, uh, for each precinct will be in the packet of information that's inside the blue folder. It'll be both on the label outside of the folder and within the paperwork inside the folder. The uh, delegate selection plan that's been approved by our central committee um, did not provide for any alternates this year because we're not anticipating the need for alternates. Uh, but what that does mean is if you've been elected as a delegate, you certainly should make every effort to attend the March 22nd uh, county assembly. Next, we will take a preference poll. And the poll in this race will be taken on the US Senate race. Um, at the moment, um, uh, Senator Udall's race is uncontested on the Democratic side. Um, we don't anticipate that changing. But uh, according to party rules, um, uncommitted must be treated as an option for voting. So a, a caucus goer can vote in the preference poll for either Senator Udall, or they can vote to be an uncommitted uh, portion of a delegation. Um, but to be awarded delegates, a candidate or the uncommitted group must receive 15% of the vote within that precinct. And we'll go through the math here in a moment. Uh, prior to taking the actual preference poll, you may begin by taking a straw poll just to gauge support prior to the official preference poll vote. This will determine if uncommitted will make the 15% threshold, or if those participants that would have voted uncommitted um, should consider voting uh, for another candidate. 
conducting the actual preference poll. Um, each person declares their preference, and a tally is kept by the secretary of that precinct. Uh, it is important that the secretary record the tally on the paperwork within the packet. Um, delegates are then awarded to the preference groups using the math worksheet that we'll go over in a minute. And preference groups then gather and elect delegates within their group if more than one candidate makes the required 15% threshold. So this is what a blank math worksheet will look like. And we're going to go through this step by step to tell you how to fill it out and take away any of the, the mystery of this. So first, the caucus chair will write and sign their name in those designated spots. Next, the secretary will note the number of, of qualified caucus attendees that are in that precinct. So let's say that eight people showed up for caucus for this particular precinct. Then the secretary will note the number of votes that are necessary to make that required 15% threshold. And that's done by going over to the threshold chart to the right and noting that 8 falls between 7 and 13 for the number of, of caucus attendees voting. And then noting that the number of the minimum number of votes that a candidate must receive to make to meet the 15% threshold is 2 in this case where 8 people are attending. And then that number 2 is brought down to the left side of the, the math worksheet to indicate that you must have at least two people voting to make the 15% threshold in this particular precinct where eight people showed up. So now we go to the official preference poll voting. In this case, we have three potential candidates. We have Roosevelt, Kennedy, and Uncommitted. And of the eight caucus attendees that are present, two voted for Roosevelt, five voted for Kennedy, and one voted for uncommitted. That means that um, we need to tally the 15% uh, making threshold. In this case, since two were required to make threshold and Roosevelt got two votes, then those two votes met threshold. The same for Kennedy. Five people voted for Kennedy, and it took two of those five votes to make threshold. So I, all five of those meet the, the threshold. And zero of the one votes for un, uncommitted made threshold because it took at least two votes to make threshold. We only have one, so none of the one votes made the two threshold. Next, we tally all of the votes that made threshold in column C. So Roosevelt got two, Kennedy got five, meaning seven votes out of the eight people that voted made threshold. Next, we'll take the total votes making threshold and put that number in column D. So we'll take the, the top total from the bottom of column seven and bring it up to column D. Next, we will divide column C by column D. So 2 divided by 7 is 0.28. 5 divided by 7 is 0.714. And in this day and age, everyone um, is likely going to have a calendar on their phone, or forgive me, not a calendar, a calculator on their phone. So that should take care of the need for calculators. Next, uh, we'll write the number of a lot of delegates in column F. And we take that from the pre-printed uh, math worksheet that will show how many delegates your precinct is allotted based on the number of Democratic voters in your precinct. We'll grab that number four and bring it over to column F and put it in both of those spaces in column F. We then multiply column E by column F. So 0.28 times 4 equals 1.1. 0.714 times 4 equals 2.8. Next, we round column G to get a whole number of delegates. So 1.1 equals 1, 2.8 rounded equals 3, and that is how many delegates each of those candidates will be awarded from this precinct. A little bit more math, and then we're almost done with that. Uh, obviously, 0.49 and under, you should round down. 0.51 and up, you should round up. In the case of a tie, a half delegate can be awarded to each candidate, but that is not recommended 
a coin toss is preferred. Now, given that standard Udall's race is likely going to be uncontested and we don't anticipate uncommitted making threshold in many precincts, this is how your form will likely appear at the end of your night. Uh, the caucus chair is obviously filled out the top uh, portion. Uh, Senator Udall got eight votes in the preference poll because that was how many people attended caucus in this precinct. All eight of those made threshold in column C. In column D, we divide eight uh, by the number of caucus attendees. And he got 100% of the votes. Multiply that by the number of delegates that are possible. One times four equals four. Then the next thing is to um, uh, actually elect the delegates from the, the preference group um, that will attend the March 22nd County Assembly. If uncommitted made the 15% threshold, then you need to divide into preference groups those voting for uncommitted and those voting for, uh, for Udall. And each preference group will elect their allotted number of delegates in the case of Roosevelt and uh, Kennedy, it was one and three, respectively. Um, no automatic delegates um, are allowed based on party office. For instance, I'm the county party chair. Um, I don't automatically become a delegate. I have to be elected as a delegate from my precinct. Uh, House district chair is the same way. Uh, we should all, always try to strive for a balance of men and women where possible. Uh, and voters whose candidate didn't make threshold, uh, for instance, if someone, um, if uh, people wanted to be an uncommitted delegate, but uncommitted did not make the 15% threshold. Those people can now uh, be elected as a delegate for Senator Udall if they choose to and if the precinct uh, decides that. Uh, what if my precinct doesn't have enough people to become delegates? Uh, this is where people who are not physically present for caucus actually can participate. Uh, caucus attendees can contact other Democrats who live within the precinct and were qualified to participate at caucus but did not attend. Uh, you can do that by phone or email or text message or, or whatever, and we would need to get their information to fill out the delegate forms, and that has to be done the evening of caucus before people leave. It can't be done once the caucus has uh, closed for the official business. So if you know of a neighbor who would like to participate further but just can't make it to caucus on March 4th, ask them if they want to be a delegate and get their information and you can um, help them to participate further even though they weren't able to participate on caucus night. So now you are a new, newly elected delegate. The secretary needs to make sure that they have your name and contact information, uh, phone number, email address, etc. Um, and they should let you know that the county convention uh, and assembly will be March 22nd, 2014. Registration will begin at 9 a.m. Uh, the assembly itself will begin at 10 a.m. It will be held at Grandview High School and the auditorium. The address is 20500 East Arapahoe Road in Aurora. Um, that is roughly three miles east of Parker Road or one mile west of E-470, but you should note that uh, Arapahoe Road does not have an exit off of E-470. You'd have to exit either Gartrell or Smoky Hill and then travel down to Arapahoe Road. Uh, additional caucus business, um, we have to, as a county party, pay the school district to let us use their facilities. Um, so we ask for uh, some minor donations to offset the cost. Um, we sign up people to be election judges and poll watchers, and then we consider any platform resolutions. And this is where um, a precinct can meet and submit a resolution for the caucus to discuss. A simple majority of those that are present uh, need to vote to pass a resolution from the precinct to the county platform committee. Um, and those written resolutions must be submitted with caucus materials at the end of the night. Uh, we don't anticipate any co conflict resolutions, but if there are, uh, then that is a, a conflict must be submitted in writing and will be resolved by, uh, by me, the, the county party chair, at a, uh, a time after the caucus. And again, this is not something that we're anticipating uh, happening, but we need to address it just here. Uh, finally, we adjourn the caucus. The precinct chair and secretary make sure everything is legible, ensure the PCPs have their instruction packets. 
Um, the instruction packets will have uh, dates for PCP training, uh, where we will uh, make you a functioning PCP and so that you can really do some good in your neighborhood. Uh, make sure that you return the materials to the site coordinator, um, and then the site coordinator will report the preference poll results to uh, the county office by that uh, evening at 9.30. And then important dates to remember, uh, the, obviously the caucuses are March 4th, the assembly is March 22nd. Uh, Friday evening will be the Congressional District Assemblies. Uh, all day Saturday, uh, certainly in the morning and early afternoon, will be the State Assembly. Uh, April 12th in the evening will be the State Party's Jefferson-Jackson Dinner. Uh, it's a fundraiser for the State Party, and the keynote speaker will be uh, Congressman Joaquin Castro from San Antonio, Texas. Uh, June 24th will be the Colorado primary elections, should we have any contested races. And November 4th will be the general election. I thank you very much for uh, watching our presentation on caucus training. If you have any questions, uh, you can contact me um, at john, J-O-H-N, at arapahodems, D-E-M-S, dot org, john at arapahodems, dot org. Um, but most questions should be easily answered by the site coordinator, and now that you've gone through the training, uh, you probably won't have a lot of questions. This is not a complicated process, although the math worksheet sometimes appears that way. Um, but we look forward to seeing you at caucus. We look forward to working with you to help elect Democrats in 2014. Thank you very much.